we are going to discuss, you know, like a very simple thing, how things are changing in Nepalese market space, right? So starting with, uh, starting with the out, our, you know, like the topic is uh, shift in selling, you know? Is there really shift is happening in selling? So I'd like to start with Mr. Prabir Kumar Nag. Uh, you know, like the, is there any shift is taking place in, you know, like the, your business that you are operating and then how it looks like? Uh, please, could you please, uh, you know, like elaborate it to audience, please. Thank you, Govind. First of all, my greetings to all the uh, beautiful people sitting in front of me. And uh, I wish all of you uh, great success. Believe you in me. Actually, I have taken interest to come here because I have come here to learn from all of you. Not that I know everything. Okay, first you have to accept that. Thank you for your kind words. To get back to the topic, whether there is a shift. Yes, there is a shift. Sometimes the shift in the last few years has been very tectonic. There are two kinds of shift, I would say. Or there are two types of people or customers that we deal with in the market who actually affect these changes. One is the end consumer, the other is the trade, the seller, through whom we reach the end consumer. The end consumer, let's talk of the end consumer. The end consumer today is very young, ambitious, knowledgeable, well-traveled. They travel across the country and the world. They are exposed to loads and loads of information which come to us through the electronic and the digital media. Then their peers, their friends, are equally knowledgeable. So when they socialize, they, they are exposed to many things, number one. Number two, there, is, there are proliferation of brands. The choice is humongous. There's a wide spectrum of products and services which is available in the market. So, obviously, the mind is very fickle. When you are loaded with a lot of information, you, of course, become knowledgeable, but they will always confuse us. They will confuse us, and therefore, the fickle-mindedness comes, whether to use this product or that product. The third thing is, there are products of similar types. We call them parity. Let's say I'm from the liquor industry. So if I'm selling a vodka, which is Ruslan vodka, which is the number one brand in the country, number one liquor brand in the country, or a whiskey. So if you drink a vodka or a whiskey, you obviously enjoy and get affected. Then what is the difference with the other product? So the consumer looks for a product differentiation also. He looks for maybe a kick, he looks for excitement, he looks for status, he looks for socializing, he looks for, if, if it doesn't make hole in his pocket, if it affordability, availability. There are many factors. And what he gets to hear from his peers, what he gets from the electronic media, the digital advertisements and the advertisements that uh, go on day in and day out, and you're bombarded with those information. So what happens is, then that clouds the mind also. So therefore, the consumer keeps shifting. The other thing is, we find that there is the, the power of purchasing is increasing. There is increase in the power of purchasing. So what happens is, as the income goes up, the choices keep different, yeah. keep changing. You upgrade yourself. When I was a student, I would look forward to a cycle from my father. When I got it, I became very excited. When I went to college, and I passed out, I started working, I wanted a two-wheeler. When I bought a two-wheeler, I upgraded myself from a cycle to a two-wheeler, uh, an auto, uh, an, uh, I mean a bike. And then after a few years, if you go up, you want a four-wheeler. So your, your choice and your 
lifestyle, as it changes, that also keeps shifting. So therefore, what happens is, one is fickle-mindedness, then proliferation of brands, too many choices, too much of information, too many things young people want to do, there is definitely, they cause a shift. The other thing is the traders, through whom they purchase. See, they are a great, important link in the chain of supply from the company to the end consumer. They also look, their, 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 their ambition, their, uh, their uh, desires, their uh, business, uh, what do you call, objectives have changed. They want to earn more money. They want, to, they want more schemes. They want more margins. Whoever gives them more margin, they'll try to uh, promote those products. So, you know, they are also a big influencer. They influence the end consumer because the company doesn't, is not able to meet the end consumer always. So they are a very important link. So they also dictate their terms. So because of all these factors, there definitely is a shift. There definitely is a shift. Yeah, thank you. So now I request to pass mic to Robina, ma'am. And <clears throat> you know, like the, on basis of your own experiences that how consumers choice, I mean, how selling has been shifting to the new age that, that you, do you really believe or you know, the, the way that we used to buy things, the way we used to, uh, people used to do banking earlier days, has it changed or is there, is there a paradigm shift in, in that regards or you know, the, what you experience really? Thank you. Good afternoon everybody. I'm sure you're having a wonderful session. And it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here and to share my experience with you. Getting back to your question, I've been in banking 27 years and uh, it, would, it would be injustice to the consumer as well as the, um, the knowledge of the uh, Nepali um, citizens if I were to say that there hasn't been a shift. There's been a huge shift. We keep talking in banking about uh, competition and how competition has increased. But when we talk about sales, there's one premise that I think in sales we should never forget. Of course, there are value-added propositions that any industry who's in the service industry should bring to the table, to the end user. But one fundamental thing that I'd like to state here before I answer your question is that we should never forget the link between sales and service. At the end of the day, no matter what kind of value-added proposition you might give, if there isn't an essence of, say, of service in your proposition, it, is, it does not last and it is not sustainable. Now that is the shift that I, I have experienced and I have observed in the mindset and the awareness of the general Nepalese public. That being said, 60% of the populace still remains unbanked. So there's a huge market still. Uh, when we talk about an industry like banking, there's a lot still to be done. So the 40%, there has been a huge shift in their they're very conscientious now. That is what we have seen. That, what is, that is what all of us bankers observe. They're very conscientious. They know um, which bank is offering what. And if you provide service or any proposition with a very short-term vision in mind, we have seen many um, sales uh, gimmicks if I'm allowed to use that word. Um, not, uh, not sustain, that is what we have seen. So there's been a huge shift. With the advent of technology, I think, um, and the change in the lifestyle of the urban and semi-urban 40%, the, um, the thing that is most prized and we have less of 
is time. When we look at our population, uh, a large percentage of our population consists of the youth, the ones who still remain in Nepal. And those who do remain, they're very conscientious, number one. But number two, they are also very tech savvy. And we all know that the imports, import of uh, cell phones in Nepal is double or sometimes triple the population size. And therefore, people with uh, not having enough time, they look for services on their hand phone, on their cell phones. So that has changed as well. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Rabina ma'am. Now, uh, I request Mayer sir to you know, share his experience in terms of the industry that you are engaged in. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yes, uh, the first thing I love to say, yes, there is a big shift. But uh, we need to, as a, as a sales person, or a, a, if we say it's a sales summit, I mean, the consumer are same. The behavior are almost same. But what has changed in consumer's mind is their experience. All your consumer, the way consumer used to experience it right now, after the exposure of media, after the exposure of internet, now the thought process or behavioral aspect has changed. So it's not just consumer has shifted. I think the experience to consume the product and services available in the market. I mean, the consumer wants that experience which he or she gets on the whole environment. Where which factors affect this is, I say, if I move into social media, cultural shapes, or behavioral aspects, income, education, exposures, I mean, all these factors which has moved in last 10 years, if I take Nepal, 91, 2000, and 2000, 2010, and 2018. So these are the three different decades where the big shift has moved, especially when it comes to consumer minds or consumer mindset. Not only media, not only banking, not only every, I think everywhere, even if you go to Birkuti Mondap, to the lobbies, you'll find the various thought process of consumer. And the consumers who, who have exposed not only the social media, they have exposed to global market. And just uh, internet, access to social media has made them a person who can buy anything or get a service from anywhere. And the same guy gets the same product in Nepal. So imagine I'm buying on a Walmart in New York and I'm buying a product in Vat Batini. So the same guy, because I have exposure to that Walmart, which is available on my websites and he offers, they offer the same product. So the experience of buying that things and the experience I get in Nepal, I mean, that is a bigger thing which has shifted in the last 10 or 15 years. So I think the upcoming days are very tough for especially the bigger audience out there for our sales teams or marketing, whoever thinks of selling and buying any product on the market, it's very tough, not that easy. The competition are not only within, they are across, it's a global market. You'll, you are not just competing with Nepali, to Nepali, you'll be competing with everyone. So in that sense, I think everybody said something, so there is a big shift and there is a tough time ahead. Okay, so, so I want to keep, uh, I mean, I mean, Please hold, hold on the mic and then I want to, this time I want to come back, you know, this way. So, see, we have moved in federal structure, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the country has moved to the federal structure. And, and maybe in banking that uh, Rastra Bank has, you know, they have sent a circular to, you know, they put their head office, I mean, sort of offices in the provinces and it's, those sort of regulations has come. And then has it made any difference or, I mean, has it, you know, the, uh, how it has you know, impacted your business, and then how it will further impact to the people, you know? Uh, I think uh, if, if we talk about province, uh, yeah. all those provinces, uh, this will more enhance uh, or, or strengthen the province. At the same time, the audience there, the population there. Yes, earlier the thought process used to be uh, top bottom. Let's say top bottom means all centric and Kathmandu, and they decide how the province will go, how the person living in Dhangari to person living in Jumla to Dhankuta. So as the province divided, so now as a media, we start thinking station in Biratnagar, station in, let's say, 
Surkhet, a station in Dhangadi. So the thought process will be bottom up. Okay. So what benefit they're going to get is the local thought process. Yes, definitely supported and groomed by the national heads. But despite who operates in the ground, so the every information, everything that goes on a pipeline, that will go from the down end. So blended with the top and the bottom both combined. I think the people or population or consumer, whoever down there, for me as a media guy, I say the information will be more disseminated, more segregated, more personalized. For, for, for the guy who is stationed in Nepal Guns and he has some issue related to Nepal Guns, why will we bother what happens in Dhanguta? So he'll be more conscious and concerned about the issue related to Nepal Guns or the issue related to Biratnagar. So I think the benefit that federal structure is offering me, especially in a media, to give more personalized, more concentrated efforts. So thereby the concerned people, a concerned location, a concerned area can, can be properly targeted and then we can enhance it properly and we can get that information and put it to, to the state governor, government or to the uh, national go government so thereby the real action can take earlier faster compared to earlier state. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Let me just yeah. add a little bit yeah. to this. Uh, this, uh, this one of our directors sent an email recently. Mr. The Honorable Prime Minister has given a report in the last five months. He says that he, they are going to give tax holidays to province 7, province 2, 3, like Simra, Bhairava. Uh, these are the places where, you know, lots of, if they give, if they become tax havens or uh, some relief uh, for setting up uh, shops and industries, I'm sure a lot of money will flow there. And that will be good for us, uh, especially for banking for us also, if more money flows. Since we are in the, uh, we are in the self, I would say our products are self-indulgent. <laughs> so when you have more money, you go eat, and dine and drink. Okay, so it obviously, uh, you know, it can give us an opportunity of uh, uh, doing better business in these areas. As marketing people or as a company, we should look forward to those opportunities. Uh, the Jawalakil Group of Industries, our MD is uh, very proactive. I mean, like uh, with the provincialism, the federal structure which has come into Nepal, fortunately till now, the tax structures are same in the alcoholic uh, beverages industry. Uh, but in the states, or uh, even in India, I'm from India, uh, 29 states have diff 29 different, uh, you know, tax structures of, mm -hmm. of liquor. If you import from one state, yeah, we say import, as if you're importing from another country. So you take from state one to state two. So you have to give an export fee, then you have to give an import fee, which builds on your cost and, and also affects your bottom line and margin. So it's a big challenge. We're looking forward this, if this happens, we can keep our fingers crossed and think that it should not happen. But if that happens, then obviously it'll be a big challenge for us. And you can't go and set up a distillery or a brewery in every province. It's heavy uh, capital investment uh, industry. So, you know, it can change the dimension, as you're saying. And there'll be a major, major shift. So if, if, if we have, like in Bhairava, we have a brewery. So from there, we are, we are sending to all across Nepal. Say from Bhairava is one state, then you bring it to Kathmandu, there's another state or a province. So you, it'll, you have to give export duty there, you have to give import duty. Then the structures, the chief ministers can have different structures. For a bottle of beer, one may, the government may charge 10 rupees. I'm just giving a simple example. Maybe in Kathmandu, it may be 15 rupees. Or ten, or, and it will obviously build on your, you can't, you have to sell it on an MRP. So what happens is your MRP remains the same, your taxes go up, so it hits the bottom line. Because you can't have one MRP there and another MRP here for the same product. It's, a, it's going to be a, um, a real brain twister and, uh, and, 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 and a game changer also. It could happen uh, to answer your question, Thank you. federalism. Okay. Thank you. So please pass it to Robin M.M. So how it is impacting in banking industry and then how it will further impact, I mean, how your line of action will work, I mean, to, because it has, it has, it has changed the power centers, different power centers being created, and and what is, what is your view on that, please? 
Well, they're already setting up provincial, provincial offices mm -hmm. because that came in the monetary policy and those of us who are bankers over here. We have to set up an office by the end of this fiscal year. We'd already been mulling about it. And I think it's just a question of time before the uh, taxation, like you mentioned. Mm -hmm. There's going to be different taxation policies. And I see this in two ways. Number one, I see it as an opportunity. But I also see it as a, see it as a challenge for those um, who are already in the industry in terms of getting to know your communities and your provinces better. One size will not fit all, for sure. So I think it's, like you said, I think it's, a, it's the right term to use to say that it's going to be a game changer. Because you'll have to understand the communities and what they look for. Because sales is all about understanding the pulse of your consumer and what they're looking for. And then to be able to serve what, uh, what is in demand. And that, I think, determines your success in many ways. So um, I see it as a huge opportunity, but also for us uh, Nepali citizens to not stay away um, anymore by uh, sitting in the center, sitting in uh, the so-called capital as of now, Kathmandu, and not knowing what goes on in uh, Bhojpur. You have to understand the community in Bhojpur and what they look for. The services that I offer in Kathmandu is not, probably not going to sell in Bhojpur. So I have to make sure, and those of us in the center and in the provinces, we need to understand it's an opportunity for us to get to know our communities and get to know the Nepalese people better. Thank That's you. how I see it. Thank you. Now, coming back to Nag, so, uh, <clears throat> you know, this morning I was visiting, uh, you know, a website Hello. called salesforce.com. Guys, this is a very useful website that you can, you know, even note down. Salesforce.com, you, you know, it gives you the trends that what is happening around the globe. And this morning, this morning, I, I believe, here are, you know, uh, I, I believe there are so many people from automobile industries as well, right? So it's, now it's a, it has become a trend because mega markets are saturated. Big markets are saturated and then big uh, with, you know, the huge population, those markets are saturated and, and the mega companies, big companies, they're, what they're doing, targeting to the micro markets. Then how, how you know, like the, uh, and which hardly seems in Nepal. You know, like the, all major companies are concentrated in big cities, and then their, their sales efforts are there, and then, and like ma'am said, there is a 40%, 40% or 60% people are unbanked? 60% people are unbanked, right? So that is a huge number, right? And, and you know, like, and we are not targeting those micro markets. Then, you know, like, what the sales guys or, you know, like the industries or, you know, the manufacturers need to do, what do you want to suggest? Well, micro-marketing is the in thing now. I mean, uh, like Ravina Madam said, different strokes for different folks, as they say. You can't apply the same uh, marketing gimmick. You can't give the same offers and be successful. We also have this issue when you have large brands, successful brands, and they're doing well. We don't sit back and think. But now, uh, we are facing this challenge. Uh, to come back to your question on automobile and land. See, if a, a market like, a metro market like Kathmandu is saturated. Uh, people have one car, they have two cars, and uh, obviously. But the people outside are aspirant for better life, mm -hmm. looking forward to better status. So obviously one is a strong dealer network that they have to put up and which they are doing. In fact, I have uh, a distributor in Birtamod who is uh, working with Hyundai. I mean, he was telling me last week when I was there, he's crossed, he had crossed his target last year. Okay, then uh, they work on certain schemes. But what I want to say is outside people have money. Maybe they have more disposable incomes. It may come from some business, from farming, it can happen. And then there are money transfers which happen. People from outside go out of the country. They also send back money. If you, if you look at uh, Dharan as a, as a market, a lot of people, are they've gone out and they send back money. 
So they have a lot of money and disposable income to sell. Obviously, these are the places which have potential customers, and one needs to tap there and you know, set up shops or set up their uh, dealer network. And of course, the banks are there to finance. And the, financial, the, 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 uh, the companies have to organize financing. They have to work hand in glove or like partners together for financing people, for owning automobiles and things like that. Roads are improving. And then, of course, for specific for automobile industry, I would say one is the price and the brand that you have. But you need to back it up with strong uh, service, uh, after sales service. They have to provide service. Because if your, if, your, if, your, if your car breaks down somewhere, because there are hilly roads, half of Nepal is in the mountains. <laughs> and this, you know, and if, if, if the service is not available, like you will see at Maruti, their advertisement in India, they're showing Ladakh and showing that they have a service center there. So you need to set up service centers mm -hmm. for after sell service because if you, selling is one thing, but retention of customer is the biggest challenge so that they keep coming back. Their references bring you customers. They always say, you always, if I, I would like to have an automobile and ask a people, the, so, like I said, there would be brand parity, there were product parity, but what is the product differentiation? Service could do that. Okay. Just to give an example, a Pizza Hut, all of us know, it's an international chain of uh, pizza food. Uh, you know. and then in Domino's, Domino's in India are fighting, giving them a run for their money, or in Sri Lanka. They promise in their advertisements that within 30 minutes, the pizza will be delivered to you hot and fresh. Otherwise, free. Otherwise, your money is back. So what are you doing? It's a pizza. It's cheese topped. It's got every, all the toppings. Everything is the same, more or less. But what is the difference? That it is served to you within 30 minutes. That excites the consumer to order for it. So these are the offerings, which definitely, the abstract offerings, which will have a tangible impact on the minds of the consumers so that they choose that product. Okay. That is a product differentiation in our service. In our liquor industry, we always think that we are big. Now we have realized that our strategies of Kathmandu is not going to work in Nepal Ganj. Because the consumer profile is different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Yeah. It doesn't work in Bhairava. Yeah. What works in Biratnagar does not work in Damak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So therefore, our strategies have to be very market specific and therefore, micro uh, planning and micro marketing is something which is, which is, which is the in thing now. Yeah, it has to yeah. come. So, uh, I'd like to ask with uh, Ravina ma'am, don't you think that banks are doing too late to expand their wings to, you know, they reach that unbanked population? Don't you think like that? I mean, banks Absolutely. are not... I, Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you wholeheartedly not only as a banker, but as a Nepali citizen as well, um, that uh, the concentration of uh, banking products and the uh, focus of bankers have been for too long uh, in the, uh, the so-called cities of Nepal. And um, even if I were to share personally, even though I've been in banking, I went and studied rural development. Because if I'm living in Nepal, unless and until I understand the dynamics of how you serve the rural populace, I don't think just serving the 40% continuing of uh, continuing to overserve the 40% is going to be a uh, um, uh, very sustainable for the organizations, which is also the banking uh, industry. So um, I think, yes, that is, uh, to answer your question in one word, yes, it's, be, it's taken too long for us to understand that this is an agricultural-based society. Mm -hmm. And uh, unless and until we get down to the uh, rural areas and where 
people are not ashamed to be called farmers and uh, the sons and daughters of farmers, this country is not going to change. So uh, that's the reason why I went and studied rural development and thank God for that, which is the reason why um, I'm not propagating my um, company, but uh, that's the reason why I joined the bank that I did and uh, started it right from scratch and that's why I'm still there because we realized yeah. um, the promoters as well as the management team of my bank we realized that unless and until we go and do something we cannot continue to wait for the government because we need to have a hand in the development of the country and for us to be uh, um, prouder of our citizenship and to call ourselves Nepalese. Thank you. So it's taken too long, but thank God yeah. that we're going there now. Thank you. So, Maestar, uh, we're talking about, you know, like the, the trend that we're talking about, you know, like the targeting micro markets and then the in, the, in the context of new federalist talk, sir, then what is your perception, you know, like the, I just, I asked, you know, like the why, uh, isn't it too late? for banks to, you know, they reach out that on-bank population and then, and then could you please share your experience, not only, you know, the, I'm not asking about the, you know, the banking perspective, but, you know, the, yeah. your own yeah. set of experiences, please. Yeah, it, it sounds very interesting when we talk about micro-market or, let's say, ruler, semi-ruler. I mean, if you take uh, Nepal as such, except Kathmandu, it's all ruler. Uh, forget about Nepal, Dhangadi, or let's say Birat Nagar, these are small pockets. And just try to identify the pocket's income level. What is the size of population that is there in Viratnagar or Ithari? If you go beyond Ithari, then Dhankuta. If you go beyond Dhankuta, there is Teratum or Pakriva somewhere. So what is the size of the population? What is the income status of that population? If I say, Rabina, to just go open a bank, but what's that bank going to do? How much cost that bank has to bear it? So it's all gels up on our economy, right? Income. So we need to rework whole process. Yes, it sounds very good, uh, saying yes, yeah, micro market. Uh, luckily, I had an opportunity to uh, be on a ruler market summit in India, where those ruler marketers, the marketing experts of ruler marketing in India, they used to say, we are just now started recognized by the urban marketers in a ruler market of India, right? Where the ruler market in India means the Lucknow, the Bitar city, population could be somewhere around 1 CR, 10, uh, almost uh, 1 CR. They say the Lucknow is a Bitar city, right? Despite being Bitar, it holds a Mercedes-Benz showroom and the Harley Davidson showroom. Can you imagine that thing in Kathmandu? I haven't seen a single Mercedes showroom in Nepal. There are plenty of Mercedes since 60s. There used to be a Mercedes in Kathmandu, but why not? It all goes to income. I say per capita, whatever. And at the same time, you can calculate the disposable income a person holds in Joomla. Can you imagine how much he has to spend for his day-to-day -day bread? And yes, I can go as a Coca-Cola person to Joomla or Mount Everest. Yes, Mount Everest could be a different per capita income level, right? If I go to Joomla, then the per capita could be too low where the just doing a hand to mouth is big issue. So if I again go down, who will be the culprit for me? Banks, sorry to say that. Who is the culprit in the whole system of my economy or my income level? The banks will not give me a single penny without collateral. A guy in Dhangadi, how can he have a money to start his own enterprises without finance? And he comes with the idea and then Ravinaji happily said, sorry, I can't offer a penny to you. Put me a land. Come on, his land is everything. So I'm not saying Ravinazi, I mean NRB, or the finance ministry, or the government itself. such. Though it sounds different, right? But what I'm trying to say, there is a market, but the market has to have a size, the market has to have a level, whereby you guys who are sitting this here in a salty can reach out to them and generate, and it's not something like Starbucks opening its outlet in a uh, Samboche or somewhere in the Mount Everest base camp. Why they did? Just because they want to start the saying, I'm in Everest. Is it here in Darbar Bank? No. So we need to first identify, is it a feasible size of the market? 
then if the feasibility is there, then I can reach out to that market, make it big, large, and then we talk about real micro market. So for me right now, even if as a customer, if you guys can properly serve Kathmandu well, there is a potential growth. Reason being, there is money to spend. People are there to spend on, right? So if we can really build a proper service customer care for the Kathmanduites, maybe that can be reflected back in the chain, in the whole momentum could be positive. So the, the ideal place for Nepali is Kathmandu, right? The biggest, where they come, feel, see, touch. And when they experience Kathmandu and they see where the consumer is in. And then micro market, we can build, but long way to go. Ravinaji has to come up saying, yes, I'm ready with the billions of rupees to spend on an entrepreneur without collateral. The day they decide, I believe the mother's group back in Gaons, back in those localities with a small uh, bakra palan or whatever they do, they can start earning more. And then they could be my customer when they have a disposable income. Right now, the disposable income could be, could be the amount that they spend on a student, their son or daughter. So I, as a, as a company, I, not as a Kantipur, sorry, I'm just giving my generic idea, my okay. experience only. So okay. as a company, if I was a, not even a Ruslan, if I was a Coke guy, which I used to be long back, I used to, be, I used to work in a Coke. So as a Coke guy, for me, a person in a remote Zumla is not a right customer. Reaching out, giving 25 rupees Coke will be too tough for me. I have to pay 50 rupees and I get 25 doesn't make any sense for me. Just being realistic. So how this is possible, unless and until that? Yes. Yeah, please. <laughs> yes, I have something to say. Uh, May I say please. something just yeah, to make yeah, this yeah. interesting? Yeah. <laughs> 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 Which I've been itching to say since Mahesh Ji started speaking. Um, somebody's got to do it, right? For too long, I think we bankers and marketeers have focused only where we see a return. Only where we see a return. Which is the reason why, I think it's the basic reason why we're still a developing nation or a lesser developed country. Somebody's got to do it. And if I were to raise my hand and say, this is an institution that even before Rashtra Bank, even before the central bank said, go, mandatorily, this is an institution that chose, that chose to go to the rural areas because we did not see money there first, but we had to be innovative. We had to be innovative and somebody's got to do it. And this is what I'd like to say from here, saying that we've gone into the rural areas and we've, because that is a profession as bankers, it is our skill to make one rupee four and to multiply the returns. So we had to work more than we had. I'd worked 19 years already in banking, offering vanilla banking products, but we did it and we showed the way and we actually made money out of our ventures in the rural areas. Oh, oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And then just to, uh, going back to him again, you know, going back to him again, see, the people in the bottom of pyramid, we say, you know, at the bottom of pyramid, where consumption is quite high, where most of the money they spend in consumption, in consumption, and then can you imagine the, the money they spend, bottom of the pyramid people, they spend on telephone. They spend a lot of money in recharging their, you know, like the uh, cell phones. So here I do, here I want to bring a point, and please, uh, please uh, 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 give us a very short uh, response that, are we not been able to, you know, like they match the requirements? You know, like instead of, I mean, I mean, are we able to match the requirements? You know, the people who are living outside of country and then we're treating them, you know, like the generic way. You know, like they've not been able to customize the product and services that they really need. need. Uh, I think uh, if, if, we, if we talk about product and services in general, yes, they are a category of product depending on the buyers. Mm -hmm. Right. So uh, as a bias can be categorized, the other customer can be categorized. Mm -hmm. So if I say, I think uh, in the last 10 years, mm -hmm. uh, the purchasing has been more cheaper mm -hmm. compared to uh, 10 years back. 
-hmm. Think of uh, 2000 before 2000, right? Uh, I remember when, when the Sara used to come, people used to say, oh, the, on the Sara, we need to buy a new dresses, right? Go on the days. Why? Because products are cheaper in terms. For if I move into the C and Ds, the product has been cheaper. Forget about A and Bs, right? You talked about masses. So for me, if I take it, yes, maybe the income has gone up, the overall income status has gone up. But at the same time, say thank you to the Chinese who has made product cheaper, and we are in a way happy. In a way happy. So I think there is a proper segmentation, a segregation of product and uh, services. And as per the demands, as per the buyer's capacity, it is available to lures, those who are coming abroad from abroad all the way, giving their labor, even they are buying on a their cost. And the one AA plus are buying up their cost, right? Someone is yeah. buying in Jara and someone is buying in the Birkati Mandal. I, 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 I feel like it's very good. There is a proper segregation of products. Okay. Th th thank you. Thank you so much. And then I, I just come back to Mr. Nag. You know, like, uh, we're talking about targeting micro-marketing, you know, like these small markets. And, and see, the multinationals like Unilever, they came up with the, you know, like the small you know, the sasses to, you know, like they make people habitual to, you know, like use the samples. And, and what do you think, you know, like the, are Nepali, you know, like the manufacturers are not ready to, you know, like cattle those uh, markets? So that you know, there are a lot of other companies are coming. You know, like other companies are coming, and then way, 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 way far, and then then reaching to the you know, like the, to the corner, and same you know, like the producers, Nepali, Nepali, you know, like the manufacturers have not been able to. From I'm asking you more from you know, like the manufacturing angle. Could you please? Well, uh, just to uh, he's answered this a bit. Uh, say for rural markets, you're saying. Yeah. Say their uh, requirements are there. Very yeah. much. The affordability is one which the marketeers have to keep in mind. And therefore, keeping that in mind, they have to develop products and services accordingly mm -hmm. so that it fits into their needs. See, today, mm -hmm. see, in the industrial revolution, you know, companies used to sell whatever they produced. Mm -hmm. Then a time has come where the marketeers want to meet customer needs and satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Okay, S selling is a part of marketing. Marketing is a concept. From conceptualization of an idea to consumption, okay, whether it's a business or a product, everything comes into it. Okay, so having said this, see, look at Unilever. Because they are multinational giant, they have the money muscle, they have the infrastructure to invest and go. If it will be very unfair to compare domestic industry to them because they have their limitations. Okay, the ideas are very much there. In Nepal, it's a very young country, high tech, and tech savvy, ambitious. It's one of the youngest. See, I think 50 percent. Uh, I mean, uh, the average age is 24, 25, 26. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, True. all ambitious people. Mm -hmm. The ideas are there, but you have to have the means. Like Ravina ji said, we are on a developing path. Okay, we are a developing nation. Obviously, the idea ideation before creation is very necessary. The idea has to come. That idea, ideation, the idea of growing, competing with multinationals, and uh, you know coming with those services and products are there very much. So therefore, what is happening is a beginning has been made. You need, obviously, for every business, you need finance. Okay, the banks are forthcoming with the business. Yesterday, I was reading that um, 27 out of 28 banks, they have, their profit has been 18% more than last year. There were 7 billion, they've got 49 billion. Congratulations. And of course, the interest rates have gone up. I know my dealers, I mean, they pay through their nose. And the banks really earn out of it during the budget sessions, budget uh, sales. So the wish is there. When the will is there, you will obviously find your destination. Mm -hmm. So a progress is being made. There are very big industrialists over here. Today morning, you have heard one of the best in this part of the world. 
who represents Nepal, not only in Nepal, outside, Mr. Vinod Chaudhary. I see my boss, I see his friends. They really, we have got a German brewery for 4 billion, 400 crores, okay? And we have set up uh, one of the best uh, breweries in Southeast Asia. I can tell you, with that money, we could build two and a half Chinese or Indian brewery over here. Okay. To bring so, so therefore, so, it is yeah, there. It yeah, will reach yeah. there. It we are, will reach we are, there. We are, you know, about to end, and then it's just, and what you are facing currently, challenges, please, one, two, three, you know, any very... Challenges, challenges are and, actually yeah, yeah. to overcome yeah. these hurdles uh -huh. and meeting the aspirations of the customers mm. and as well as the sellers. Okay. There's a big challenge. Okay. The companies and the sales team, the marketeers, they have to keep themselves motivated. Uh -huh. They have to be competitive. They have to be flexible and fast decision making. They have to be innovative also. Okay. And they, they have to move forward. They have to go and meet the customer's aspiration. Thank you. Please pass to Rabina ji. Uh, what are the challenges that you are facing you know, from your own experiences and your industry and then in, in the perspective? I think the biggest challenge that we're facing is in the industry specific to banking, right? No, oh, you're open. Overall? Yeah. I think the challenge that we're facing, number one as a country, is uh, to wait and watch and to see if uh, the federal structure okay. and uh, the, uh, the provincial structure and what, the, what the, country, the government has got planned is actually going to reach fruition or not. And when is the question, if I speak as a banker? Because I need to see the money flow. And sir, just to answer your question, the reason why the interest rates went up is not because the bankers got greedy, but because there was no money in the market. There was no money in the market, but then our capital is so large, which was a government, which was a decision, a regulatory decision, which all of the 28 banks had to reach uh, had to, um, yes, had to fulfill, and therefore to service that, there were too many people, of course, there's so many stakeholders who are looking at you. So in order to service that, we had, we had no option but to increase the interest rate, right, because we had to sustain. So uh, the challenge that we're facing right now, I think is, yes, we are doing whatever we need to. Um, the bank that I'm in is... Uh, we have a research and development uh, uh, unit, which I think is very uh, novel in the banking industry. We don't have that in most of the banks. But I think right now the biggest challenge is getting to know um, and uh, shift the mindset of the bankers already, seasoned bankers, to, so to speak. And even, even uh, just generally, pe you know, manufacturers and salespeople, because they don't know mm -hmm. where we're going and how it's going, you know, if the taxation is going to change, where, how do you make a five-year strategy? How do you make an annual plan? What if it happens this year, within this fiscal year? Great, I'll probably need you. to change yeah. my um, pricing yeah. or my strategy. The yes, yeah. the volatility of what is happening. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the sooner we know, the better. Yeah. Yeah. I think We're that's the biggest time. challenge. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Maestro, what do you feel, you know, the current challenges that you are facing? Uh, uh, I think uh, for me, for normal, I think the, one of the biggest challenge is a human resource, uh, uh -huh. which is non-stable, uh, and, and they are not creative uh, in general, sorry to say that. Guys, there is a huge opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. and yeah. another, I think, the attitude uh, towards work, uh, yeah. towards their profession, Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and third, I'll say optimism. Uh, there is plenty of negativity, which Ravinaji very happily said we have to be positive, in a sense, right? So, which I see is not there. So, I, I'm not taking all this. General, I say the human resource is one. I think attitude and optimism. These three are the, one of the key factors that I feel. Okay, is, stopping uh, you there, could you please, you know, like the, uh, what is your message to youngsters? You know, like the, who are growing professionals? Uh, you guys, uh, you are here means you are really uh, optimistic. Uh, you want the, your futures to be big. Keep, be passionate where you are, what you do. Uh, just do whatever you want. In a sense, give your best. Just give your best. 
and stick on what you do and don't save a lot. Thank you. Please. Your message to the youngsters. You know, like aspirational. A lot of people are looking upon you. You know, like they, they, you are like a role model, and then people are, you know, like looking at you. Then what do you want to suggest? Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Um, with that being said, my message to all the youth, which I've said and I'll continue to say, is I have the option to live outside this country, but I choose to live in this country because um, if I go to another country and live, I'll always be a second class citizen, and I'd like to be a first class citizen wherever I am and have a hand in the development of this country. And what I'd like to say to the youth is the beauty, the upside of being in a developing nation is there's lots of opportunities. We just got to have the eyes for it. You just got to have the eyes for it. There's lots of opportunities in our country. Having said that, um, you know, we are a country that has faced um, internal conflict. We are a country that has faced natural disaster. We are a country that has faced uh, being squeezed between two superpowers, you know, and this will continue. This will continue. But, but, unless you dump your Nepalese passport and your citizenship, stay in the country, go out. That is what, I'm, what I'd like to say to the youth. Go out, gather, understand best practices, what is happening in developing nations, come back and apply it. And we are there as bankers until I'm still in banking. Uh, at least come to this bank because we'll be there to put your box on you, the rupees on you, and to invest in you. And for your information, once again, we have financed buffaloes to yaks, to strawberries, to people who cannot see, to um, goats. And there are lots of success stories and there are lots of people who've come back to this country and are reaping. Okay. Now, now, Mr. Praveer, uh, you know, like the, I asked you to, you know, to take quite short time. Then, what are the challenges that you? Uh, I mean, I think you already mentioned. And then, what is your message to, you know, like the upcoming, you know, like the growing sales professionals? Well, after such an uh -huh. often uh, advice from Ravina, I would say that uh, evolve yourself, know what you want to do. Know yourself, know thyself, what you want to do, stay on course, evolve yourself, develop skills so that you remain competitive, competence, develop competence and be patient because if you keep switching your jobs, if you keep changing for a few hundreds here and there, a rolling store gathers no moss. You have to be willing to work hard, sacrifice, go the extra mile. If you're willing to do that, you guys are young, you definitely will. I can tell you my example. I started my career as a salesperson in the first run with 600 rupees salary. So I have worked my way up. I've roughed it out. Please have a mindset to rough it out. Okay. Opportunities will come. Thank you. Thank very you much. so much. Okay. So, guys, maximum. Okay. So, Guys, thank you so much for your patience. Thank you so much for bearing me for one hour. And then, you know, like, the, and thank you, panel, for bearing me for one hour. And then, and thank you so much for your wonderful remarks. And then, you know, like, the very insightful thoughts. And thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. It was a great pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much.